Hey everyone, welcome to my intermediate guide to Hades. If you don't know what Hades is, you should check out my absolute beginner's guide up at the top right there. And you should buy it, you should get addicted, and you should come back to this video once you've been playing it for a while. This guide is aimed at those who've been playing for quite some time, who've had plenty of escape attempts, but haven't quite made it out yet. Maybe you're stuck on a boss, or you're finding it a bit overwhelming in the later stages. Maybe you're feeling in a bit of a limbo because you don't know what to prioritise in terms of unlocks or upgrades. If any of that sounds familiar, then this is the guide for you. Fair warning, there are going to be some very minor spoilers in here, although I'll do my best to keep the later areas, bosses and story stuff out of sight. So what are we going to cover? We're going to look at calls of the gods, we're going to look at how to learn to beat bosses, we're going to look at some things that you can do in between learning to beat bosses, and we're going to look at some things that are going to help you escape. So let's go! I've got to mention Calls of the Gods in my beginner's guide and I've seen enough people confused by them online that I think they're worth covering quickly. After you've done a few runs, you'll start to be offered a new kind of boon, Call of the Gods. As usual, these will come in various flavours depending on the god. Some are offensive, some are defensive, and some will have quite specialised effects. Once you've acquired one, you'll get a god gauge under your health bar. This gauge is filled by dealing or taking damage. Taking damage will fill the meter a lot quicker than dealing damage. Once you fill the portion of the bar, it will ignite. At this point, you can press R2 or the right trigger to activate it. This will consume one chunk of the bar. If you let the bar completely fill, you can unleash a super version of the core, which will have an additional effect like increased duration or damage. The most important thing to note though, and again, this is one of those things that took me way longer to notice than I'd like to admit, is that the gauge empties once you've cleared an encounter. So make sure you keep an eye on the gauge and use it liberally the epic versions of these calls can be insanely powerful, so don't squander those opportunities to smash the hell out of your enemies. We've all been there. You get to a boss, sweaty palmed, and before you know it, you're mashing dodge too much, you're getting hit from all angles, and then you're back at home. Anyway, let me talk you through the mindset and approach that helps me beat a boss. Your first step should always be research. Facing a new boss, instead of going all in and just trying to kill them, keep your distance and just watch what they do. Don't worry about dying. In fact, you should expect to die a few times while you're learning. What you'll soon discover is that all the bosses only have a handful of attacks at most, and each attack has a pretty obvious tell. So let's look at Meg quick. At the beginning of the fight, she can only do two attacks. She either crouches and then dashes in a line, or she reaches up into the air and then does some crazy ass spin kick thing. Once you figure those two moves out, you can start diving in for some attacks in between hers. Don't get greedy with your attacks, there's no rush. Dash in, land a few hits, dash out, wait for the next tell, then repeat. Bosses get additional attack patterns once they've lost a chunk of health. The transitions for this are indicated by the boss becoming invincible for a moment. When this happens, back off and get yourself back into research mode. Of course, the thing that often makes the bosses tricky is you don't fight them alone. There will be additional enemies or other distractions to make your life difficult. Make use of the environmental objects like pillars or walls to protect yourself, and try not to steer too hard at Zag. Soften your focus and try and take in the whole screen. Auto-aim will do most of the work, so you just keep an eye out for the next thing that's going to kill you, and get out of its way. Banging your head against the boss over and over can get soul-destroying, especially as you get further, which means it takes you longer and longer before you can do some more research. Luckily, there's plenty of scope in the game for setting yourself sub-goals in the meantime, which can help take the edge off of all that death. Now, at the start, you've probably focused on unlocking all the weapons and maybe an extra part or two of the mirror, but beyond that, I've got some recommendations for you. By now, you may well have collected some bounties, as the game calls them. Titan blood, diamonds, and even possibly some ambrosia. But I wouldn't blame you if you weren't exactly sure why the bosses seem to drop these items sometimes, but not others. In short, the first time you beat each area's boss with each weapon, they'll drop a bounty. You'll get Titan Blood for clearing area 1, Gems for clearing area 2, and Ambrosia for clearing area 3. Defeating a boss using a weapon you've previously beaten them with will mean they drop a fat chunk of darkness instead. Unfortunately, there's no good way to track bounties in the game until you've escaped the first time, but you can get an idea by looking at the map in between zones. If there's a question mark on the next area's icon, you haven't yet got that reward. But anyway, set yourself a target of clearing the first area with each weapon, then the second area, and so on. One of the first things you can buy from the house contractor is the fated list of minor prophecies. This is kind of like an achievement list, you'll get objectives like meet all the gods, unlock the weapons, stuff like that. Each prophecy will have its own reward that you can use to spend on getting stronger or on buying more stuff from the contractor. As you progress, the prophecy list will grow, so make sure to check it from time to time. 
To help you fulfill the duo and legendary boon prophecies, you can get a codex upgrade from the contractor, which will let you view the requirements for the trickier boons. You can access it by pressing your share button, menu button, minus button, while looking at the gods page in the codex. One thing you may notice is you only have a prophecy for Athena's boons at the beginning. If you want to get prophecies for the other gods, you'll need to make sure to give them some nectar first. It's worth spending some time collecting and levelling the keepsakes. You probably have some early game favourites, but I'm afraid it's time to ditch Skelly's tooth. Some of my runs got really interesting thanks to taking a keepsake I've never really used before. For example, taking Charon's keepsake made me actually spend a ton of money at the wells, and I became obscenely powerful as a result. Be sure to grab the regional keepsake collection from the contractor as well, so you can switch keepsakes after each boss. This isn't really a goal you can actively pursue due to the random nature of it, but do make sure to save a diamond for the fishing rod that the contractor sells. Fishing points will then randomly show up throughout the game. Listen out for the telltale chime when one is in the room. It'll ding after you've cleared all the enemies. You can turn the fish you catch into the chef in the house lounge. He'll give you some good cash for the rarer fishies. Finally, leveling up your relationships with the NPCs is definitely worth doing, not only because this will let you unpick more of the story, but it will have additional effects that can get you some sweet gear and cool upgrades. You may have noticed in the codex that each person you've given nectar to will have a little heart icon on their page. Keep giving them nectar to fill out more and more hearts. Eventually you'll get a locked heart. These can be tricky to progress, but more often than not involve talking to and improving relationships with other NPCs. Once conditions are satisfied, you'll be able to give the NPC some ambrosia to unlock the locked heart and continue leveling up your relationship with them. And if you're really lucky, they'll give you a really cool reward. Okay, to finish off, let's cover off a few pointers that I think will definitely help you make it to the end of the game. Of course, all the mirror talents are great and have their uses, but at the beginning there are a few I'd prioritise. One Death Defiance. More Death Divines are useful of course, but they get expensive very quickly. I think you're better off spending your darkness on damage related talents at the beginning. Shadow Presence is great, once maxed you'll be doing an extra 50% damage from behind which is very, very good. Once you've got the ability to toggle to the alternative talents, make sure to take Dark Regeneration. It gives you a really good heal after bosses when they drop darkness, and it'll also turn the Darkness Infernal Troves into healing sources. Greater Reflex is absolutely invaluable, the extra dash makes things considerably more manageable. For the same reason, I'd always recommend you grab Hermes when you see him for a chance to get that additional dash boon of his. In the section you unlock for 5 keys, Infernal Soul gives you more ammo for your cast which will make it way way more useful, and Boiling Blood will give you bonus damage for when the enemies have a cast gem stuck inside them. I'd also make it a priority to unlock the next two mirror sections, because under the 20 keys section you get access to a great power called Privileged Status which gives a very good damage bonus against enemies that are affected by at least two status curses. Now what are status curses? Boons that afflict curses will tell you in the description, but generally it's anything that causes a lingering effect on your enemies. So that could be weak from Aphrodite, doom from Ares, hangover from Dionysus, etc. You can tell when you've applied two curses by this little symbol which appears next to the enemy's health bar. Even if you don't max out these damage boosting talents, you should easily be able to double your damage output, providing you adjust your playstyle to suit. So, apply curses, embed your cast gem, and attack them from behind whenever possible. It's a bit tricky to recommend specific combinations of weapons, boons, and other upgrades because they're randomised in how they're offered, and the things that really work well together you can really only discover by playing it. But having said that, there's a few things I want to say. First, I think you should always take whichever weapon has the purple glow darkness boost. Try to let go of the idea of you having a favourite weapon. The first time I cleared the game, I was using a weapon I thought was a bit boring. But thanks to some lucky finds and good picks on my part, it all came together in the end. Second, try to pick boons that fit your weapon's attacks. And by this I mean look at how a boon works and then try to put it where it's useful. So for example, let's think about Dionysus's Hangover. It's a poison-like effect that can stack up to five times. For it to be most effective, you need it to be on something that hits quickly or rapidly to get those five stacks. So for example, the regular attack of the fists is a good fit. Or perhaps the special on the bow where you can fire it off up close and hit an enemy multiple times in one go. This also works the other way. Something like Ares' Doom isn't really worth having on with the Fist's regular attack because it doesn't stack or do direct damage, so perhaps it's better to put that on the special attack instead. Same thing for the hammer upgrades. Try not to just blindly pick your favourites, think about how it will affect the boons you're already carrying and what might help or hinder you. 
So following on with our poison example, the hammer upgrade that slows the fist's regular attack but makes it stronger would have a big impact on your ability to do poison damage. Remember you can always check your current boons at any time by pressing the share or menu or minus button. And you can do this even while you're choosing an upgrade. Finally, don't be afraid to try boons you've not used before or haven't been too impressed with in the past. A lot of the powers in Hades get really good once they've been upgraded or they're complemented by other boons you'll get further into your escape. As an example, for a long time I thought Dionysus's festive fog was a bit rubbish, but oh my goodness, some of the extra effects it can get, combined with the really cool duo booms, makes it one of my favourites these days. You've probably seen these a bit by now, but I'd really recommend you always check these out while you're trying to clear the game for the first time. Although poor Sisyphus doesn't really have the greatest gifts to offer, the other two NPCs you can find have some really good items that will help you significantly. This piece of advice doesn't really fit with the rest of this, but I want to make sure you understand this before accidentally screwing yourself over. In the fourth area of the game, there's a bigger than usual shop, and sometimes Charon will have an anvil for sale. The description is quite clear, you'll lose one hammer upgrade, but gain two. However, you don't get any choice in what you lose or what you gain. It's all done just randomly. So yeah, don't buy it unless you're sure you want to take that chance, I guess. So there we go, that's it for my intermediate guide. I hope there's been some useful stuff in here for you. It's taken me longer than I would have liked to put this one together because I've been so addicted. So if you'll excuse me, I'm off to carry on escaping the underworld. I'll catch you in the next video.